let's see who's here. Laura Claire isn't your typical beekeeper. Ditching the traditional white protective suit and bee boxes for a small pail and carrot peeler, she's spending the day looking for native bee cocoons. There's just this sense of wonder, and you just never know what you're going to find. Today, she's headed to Sylvester Manor Educational Farms on Shelter Island to check if any native bees have made a home in one of her bee bundles, a cluster of about 18 biodegradable tubes that mimic hollow plant stems where native bees live in nature. Unlike honeybees, wild bees are solitary and don't live in hives. For Claire, that means she keeps individual cocoons in her fridge until spring when the pollination season begins. All right, so we're coming up here till to the farm. On the farm, she's looking for sealed tubes, hoping for native species like leafcutter or mason bees on the inside. Wild bees weren't always the focus of this 20-year veteran keeper who practically fell into the profession. I had a dream actually in 1997 that I was a beekeeper. So I woke up and was like, hey, I've got to keep bees. So I started actually with honeybees with one hive, grew my company to 100 hives, but I started reading more and more in the last 10 years about how native bees are so important because they are two to three times better at pollinating than the honeybees are. Started rethinking my path in life and realized the native bees are the answer. They are our future, and I need to start working on them more. Oh, maybe, what's that one? I think anybody who's ever had a conversation with Laura about bees uh, will just discover how passionate she is about her work. She is tireless, and she really wants to make a difference in the world. I've learned so much. When I first started, I started out with mason bees, and uh, you know, from there I learned about leaf cutters, and, and now, even this year, resin bees. It has definitely been a slow process because a lot of this information isn't known. But in her quest to draw attention and use these natural pollinators for farms, she never forgets the reason she loves working with them. The most rewarding thing about keeping bees, honestly, is just being with them and relaxing. You're, you're just yourself. And they treat you like one of their own, and I just think it's wonderful. With honeybees across the world disappearing, Claire does her best to ensure crops and food by using native bees for pollination. For Stony Brook News, I'm Eric Schmid.